giving you a FYI, uh, we need to make a decision here. So, so the ladies can prep for it. Okay, so. <laughs> Should I read the first one? Okay, so yeah, let's get started here. Our next agenda item. Go ahead. Okay. Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe to amend ordinance number 21-54 and delegating routine approval authority over the nine district government service building projects to the Pine Ridge Reservation on the Pine Ridge Reservation to the economic and Business Development Committee. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to US Constitutional Article 6 and is a signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851, one statute 749, and the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868, 15 statute, 635 and continues the nation to nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas tribal, whereas article four of sec sections 1F, 1M, and 1W of the tribal constitution empower the tribal council to manage the economic, economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe and protect and promote the health and welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas on June 8, 2022, the Tribal Council enacted resolution number 2284A that selected the owner's representatives to oversee and manage the planning and construction of the government service buildings in the nine district, nine tribal districts on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation pursuant to ordinance number 21-54 as amended. And whereas ordinance number 21-54 required all the proposals, expenditures, proposals and expenditures to be approved by the tribal council ordinance prior to the expenditure of any funds. Whereas the economic and business development committee is the best positioned to spend, to speed up the progress involving the construction of the government service buildings and whereas the Finance Committee has reviewed the Economic and Business Development Committee's referral to oversee and approve routine matters affecting the planning and construction of the nine tribal district government service buildings, such as approval of routine payments and is in agreement. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council does authorize and direct the Economic and Business Development Committee <clears throat> to approve routine matters related to the planning and construction of the government service buildings in each of the nine tribal districts, including routine payments. Be it further ordained that the review and negotiation of planning and construction terms such as change orders and budget modifications will remain delegated to the Finance Committee. Motion to approve. Okay. Motion by Councilman Whitehorse, second by Councilman Watkins. Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yep. Carl Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson? Yes. George Dreamer Jr.? Yes. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? Yes. David Puyer? Donor Gosper? Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ha. Uh, Jackie Sears? Oh, uh, Garfield Little Dog? Yes. John Steele Sr.? Craig Dillon? Yes. Unanimous 19. Thank you. And just a FYI to council, the um, owner's representatives were, um, the RFPs were open last week for the construction contracts. 
and they will be meeting with Economic and Business Development Committee within two weeks because they want to go out and meet with the districts first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, next, we have the resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe authorizing the treasurer to draw down funds from PL account number stated in the resolution held by the Department of Interior. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1F of the Tribal Constitution empowers the Tribal Council to manage the tribe's economic affairs, and whereas the OST land lease income account number stated within the resolution held by the Department of Interior currently has a balance of $3,589,582.52. And whereas the OST Finance Committee has reviewed the request for a drawdown of the income and recommends approval. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby approve a drawdown from PL account number stated in the resolution held by the Bureau of Trust Funds Administration Department of Interior in the amount of $3,589,582.52 for transfer into the general fund account of the Oglala Sioux Tribe at the First National Bank in Gordon, Nebraska consistent with the instructions to be provided by the treasurer of the Oglala Sioux Tribe in a separate letter to appropriate trust officer of to appropriate trust officer of the Bureau of Trust Funds Administration including the name of the financial institution in which the account is held the account number and the routing number motion to approve second Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Whitehorse, second by Councilman Councilwoman Tapio. Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Senior. Oh. Jim Inks. Coral Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Senior. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins, Senior. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. James Cross. Anna Halverson. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Don Roy Gosper. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Jackie Sears. Oh, uh -huh. Garfield Little Dog. Yes. John Steele Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Nineteen unanimous motion passed. Thank you. Next, the resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe authorizing the treasurer to draw down funds from PL account number stated in the resolution held by the Department of Interior. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1F of the Tribal Constitution empowers the Tribal Council to manage the tribe's economic affairs. And whereas the OST land lease income account P, uh, sorry, stated in the resolution, held by the Department of Interior 
currently has a balance of $1,040,049.26. And whereas the OST Finance Committee has reviewed the request for drawdown of the income and recommends approval. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Ogala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby approve a drawdown from PL account number stated in the resolution held by the Bureau of Trust Funds Administration Department of Interior in this amount, uh, in the amount of $1,040,049.26 for transfer into the general fund account of the Oglala Sioux Tribe at the First National Bank in Gordon, Nebraska, consistent with the instructions to be provided by the treasurer of the Oglala Sioux Tribe in a separate letter to the appropriate trust officer of the Bureau of Trust Funds Administration, including the name of the financial institution in which the account is held, the account number and the routing number. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Whitehorse, second by Councilman Top Tapio. Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks? Yes. Cora Whitehorse? Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Howard Rooks? Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross? Yes. Anna Halverson? Yes. George Dreamer, Jr. Yes. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? Yes. David Puyer? Don Ragosper? Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Uh, Jackie Sears? Uh -huh. Garfield Little Dog? Yes. John Steele Sr. Craig Dillon? Yes. Unanimous 19 motion passed. Thank you. Um, next, we have ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. Uh, it should say approving, not to approve. Approving the 2023 indirect cost budget. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution Article 6, and is a signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851, 1 Statute 749, and Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868, 15 Statute 635, and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas Article 4, Section 1F, 1M, and 1W of the Tribal Constitution empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe to protect and preserve the property of the tribe and protect and promote the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas Article 4, Section 1T of the Tribal Constitution gives the Tribal Council delegation authority of its enumerated powers to subordinate boards or officers. And whereas the Finance Committee is a standing committee of the Tribal Council with delegated power to oversee tribal financial matters, including budgetary issues. And whereas on March 23rd, 2023, the Finance Committee by motion and vote approved the 2023 indirect cost budget of the Oglala Sioux Tribe in the amount of 10,870,000 $669.00. And whereas the Tribal Council has reviewed the, pro and pro the proposed 2023 budget, 2023 indirect cost budget, and, is, and determined that it is in the best interest of the tribe and its members to approve the budget. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council hereby adopts and approves the 2023 indirect cost budget for the Oglala Sioux Tribe of $10,870,669.00 as set forth in the form attached here to and your budget is the next few pages. Motion to approve. Motion by Councilwoman Whitehurst, second by Councilwoman Watkins. Councilman Puyer, you had a question or was your motion? 
Uh, okay, second. Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yep. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. George Dreamer, Jr. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Donna Gosper. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ah. Yes. Uh, Jackie Sears. Uh -huh. Garfield Little Dog. John Stale Sr. Greg Dillon. Yes. Eighteen yes, one not voting. Motion passed. Thank you. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe approving WBK Engineering's proposal for Phase Two Engineering Services for roadway draining improvements. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. Whereas Article 4, Sections 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W of the Tribal Constitution empower the Tribal Council to manage economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas by resolution number 22-126, the Tribal Council approved WBK Engineering LLC to provide first phase engineering services for the Oglala Sioux Tribe Public Works Project. And whereas WBK Engineering LLC has now submitted a proposal for phase two of the engineering services for the roadway drainage improvements through the Pine Ridge, Reser Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And whereas the proposal is consistent with the expenditures of the ARP funds, ARP funds provided approved by the Tribal Council under Ordinance Number 22-53A for the Public Works Project. And whereas the OST Finance Committee reviewed the proposed contract by WBK Engineering and recommends the approval of the change order as stated above. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby approve a contract between the Oglala Sioux Tribe and WBK Engineering LLC in the same or substantially the same form as the contract attached here to as exhibit one to provide engineering services in connection with the Oglala Sioux Tribe Public Works Project for phase two of engineering services for stormwater drainage improvements through the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And be it further resolved that the tribal president is authorized and directed to enter into said contract with WBK engineering llc and be it finally resolved that the source of funds for the said contract shall be the tribe's payments from the coronavirus state fiscal recovery fund under the american rescue plan act public law 117-2 designated for the public works project um, and this one is within the original project budget so motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman, Councilman Whitehorse, second by Councilwoman Tapio. Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yep. Carl Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. George Dreamer, Jr. 
Yes. Robert Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? Yes. David Puyer? Yes. Don Gosper? Sonia Little Hot Weston? Uh, Jackie Sears? Oh, uh -huh. Garfield Little Doug? John Steele Sr. Craig Dillon. Yes. Eighteen yes, one not voting. Motion passed. Thank you. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe approving a request that the United States government provide funding to improve the Wounded Knee Massacre site in the amount of $1 million. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Sections 1A, 1K, and 1W of the tribe, Tribal Constitution empower the Tribal Council to negotiate with the federal government protect and preserve the property of the tribe and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and welfare of the tribe and its members. Whereas in, in 1890, hundreds of Lakota men and women and children were massacred by US troops. And whereas the Wounded Knee Massacre site has fallen into disrepair. And whereas the loss of life at the Wounded Knee Massacre site was caused by the United States government, and whereas the Lakota who fell at the Wounded Knee Massacre site deserved to be remembered with the utmost regard. And whereas Wounded Knee was declared a US National Historic Landmark in 1965. And therefore be it resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby approve requesting the United States provide funds in the amount of $1 million so that the Oglala Sioux Tribe May, may make needed improvements to the Wounded Knee Massacre site to fittingly memorialize the lives of the Lakota lost at the site. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Whitehorse, second by Councilman Tapio. Go ahead, we have a comment. So this motion was brought together um, in regards to the Wounded Knee site, um, you know, I read something, I'm going to read something about this, the importance of this. On December 29th, 1890, there was a massacre that happened to the Lakota Oyate. On December 29th, 1890, the United States 7th Cavalry U.S. Army massacred over 300 women, men, children, babies, elderly, our ancestors and our Lakota people. I wanna reiterate that this was a massacre and not a battle. The United States government calls it a battle. This is not only includes our Oglala Oyate here, but it also includes other tribes, the Cheyenne River tribe and the Rosebud tribe. This, there's a recorded comment by one of the generals that was at the massacre that this was a wholesale massacre that occurred and he has never heard of a more brutal, cold-hearted massacre than that at the Wounded Knee. Right now there's a proclamation from the Four Directions and a support by the Colt on rescinding the medals of the US government soldiers who massacred our ancestors. There's also a call from the Wounded Knee school students to rescind these medals given to these soldiers. There's a mass grave that the US government buried our ancestors. Over 300 of them are buried together. These are peop our people and the United States just disregarded them and buried them in one grave site. We need to make sure that we care, honor, love, respect our Oyate who were brutally massacred and the government needs to be held accountable. We need to remember that this historical trauma happened, that this that generations from now, that this landmark is remembered as a historical massacre. 
You know, I also like to see if we can ask Mario to include some words on the treaties on um, the U.S. government also being held accountable for the, the grave site to make sure that it's a historical landmark and it's always kept and preserved that way. Thank you. Go ahead, Councilwoman. Those can be it be done with a letter from the president. And I, I think that this should go to not just sit in Stacy's office, um, but I think we need to send this resolution with a letter from the president to um, the Department of Interior and the Department of Defense because they're the one who did the massacre. And it should also go to our state delegation. And um, there's a guy who works in the White House. His first name is Pawi. He's from Hawaii. I can't remember his last name, but I'll find it. And I think it should also be sent there with the president's letter. So that way, and maybe to Jennifer, so that way we can um, make sure that it gets out and is seen rather than just being passed and staying in our archives. Uh, yes, wouldn't that be Department of Army? I don't know. Defense, I believe. Department of Defense. Okay. Uh, Chairman. Go ahead, Councilman Little Dog. You know, uh, <clears throat> as a representative of Wounded Knee, I've been uh, working closely with the descendants for a lot of years. And, you know, recently I've been to a meeting out to the casino with the descendants. And they have in their plans to to put up a memorial and to kind of, you know, basically what we're requesting to to fix it up. So is there a way we can incorporate in in the language here that, you know, we'll work with the descendants to to um you know make those um those um, maintenances or whatever it is up there at the mass site or this, this even the, that memorial that they want to do. Um, if we can put some language in there where we're going to, you know, work work with the descendants on it. Yes, I totally agree. You know, it's one thing that uh, we we sometimes overlook, maybe, but uh, is that when when we discuss things like this, we need to include uh, the uh, the Oyate, um to who it pertains to. So just keep that in mind. Yes, I I do agree. It should involve the, the the descendants of a wounded knee massacre. I I think that we could just add another. Therefore, be it resolved that the tribe works with the descendants, and that could probably come last there. That the therefore be it resolved that the tribe will work with the descendants on the planned memorial site. Okay, so you want to make that amendment? Yes. Okay, so we'll make that amendment, and we have a second by Councilwoman Tapio. Run the motion. Before I call the vote, I just want to say, that documents don't just sit in my office. I, I follow the ordinance 2185 process. So whatever gets done here goes straight back to your committees. And so our, and I do, I do the direction that you guys give me. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you, Stacey. Wesley Hawkins Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks. Carl Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumping Eagle Sr. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. David Puyer. Donra Gosper, 
Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Uh -huh. Jackie Sears. Uh -huh. Garfield Little Dog. John Steele Sr. Craig Dillon. Yes. Mr. Gosper, would you like to vote? Thank you. Madam Secretary, I have a question before we move on. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, that was just regarding what Cora just said and your response about things don't sit in your office. So um, I don't believe that the committee does get the action back. And the other question I have is when we have committee meetings and we put people on the agenda and then um, they don't show up and then they say that they were never notified. So who's responsible for notifying people when they're put on a committee agenda? Just, just thought I'd ask that question. We have a form that we use for the committee when they um, want to be on the agenda. And on there, the person that's requesting to be on the committee has to put an email address down and a phone number. And so whenever the secretary send them out, then they send them the agenda. And that person usually knows um, notified by agenda that they're on there for that particular day. And I have all the secretaries doing it. So um, if you ever like to see the form, you could come into my office. And the front door also has the forms. EB and D, we requested a couple people and they they didn't come and we so we were kind of didn't know what the procedure was. Thank you. Okay, 17 yes, two not voting. Motion passed. Thank you. Next, we have uh, the resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe approving Dave Kelly, Courtney Tulant, Cecilia Fire Thunder, and Algin Young as subcommittee members of the Tribal Interior Budget Council on behalf of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Sections 1A, 1F, 1K, and 1W of the Tribal Constitution empower the Tribal Council to negotiate with the federal government to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general wealth, health and welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas the intertribal, the Tribal Interior Budget Council or TBEC for short, is a critical forum to provide partnership, to provide participation in the Indian Affairs budget developed by the Department of Interior. And whereas the current Oglala Sioux tribal representatives on various subcommittees have been involved in ongoing subcommittee work in which they participate and have background knowledge. And whereas the OST Finance Committee now recommends that the approval of Dave Kelly as transportation subcommittee member, Courtney Tulance as data management subcommittee member, Cecilia Fire Thunder, as education subcommittee member and Algin Young as public safety and justice subcommittee member on TBEC. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby approve Dave Kelly as transportation subcommittee member, Courtney Tulance as data management and collections subcommittee member, Cecilia Fire Thunder as an education subcommittee member and Algin Young as Public Safety and Justice Subcommittee member for the Tribal Interior Budget Council on behalf of the Oglala Sioux Tribe for the 2023-2024 term. Motion to approve. Second. And just a FYI, currently Dave, Courtney, and Cecilia are all voting members of those subcommittees. 
Um, and we're hoping with this resolution, Algin will be able to become a voting member as well. And this resolution does not stop any council people from going to or participating in TBEC. Okay, motion by Councilwoman Whitehorse, second by, who, who did it second? Okay, second by Councilman Tapio. Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins Sr. Oh. Jim Minx. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle Sr. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Donor Goldsbear. Sonia Little Hot Weston. Ha. Uh, Jackie Sears. Not voting. Garfield Little Dog. Yeah. John Steele Sr. Craig Dillon. Yes. Sixteen yes, one no, one abstain, one not voting. Motion passed. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> re resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe to approve a memorandum of agreement between the Oglala Sioux Hou Lakota Housing Authority and the Oglala Sioux Tribal Historic Preservation Office and Oglala Sioux Tribal Land Office. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. Whereas Article 4, Sections 1F of the Tribal Section, should be just Section 1F of the Tribal Constitution empowers the Council to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Lakota Housing Authority has recently established the OLHA Environmental Compliance Department to be responsible for the environmental review, compliance, and archaeological services for the Oglala Lakota Housing Authority projects. And whereas the the Oglala Sioux Tribal Historic Preservation Office's Office is the OST regulatory arm for the activities affecting cultural resources. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribal Land Office is the primary land managing agency for the tribe providing technical assistance regarding land transactions. Whereas the OLHA OSTHPO and O-S-T-L-O, please don't ask me what those stand for right now, have agreed to enter into an MOA to coordinate efforts on the compliance with federal laws, federal regulations, and tribal laws and ordinances in an effort to expedite required archae architectural I think that's supposed to be archaeological, required archaeological and cultural surveys. And whereas the MOA specifies tasks for each of the above referenced entities to ensure including payment of archaeological services rendered by the Oglala Lakota Housing Authority ar archaeologist. And whereas the OST Land and Natural Resources Committee approved the MOA between the OL, 
H A. That one's wrong too. Needs to be corrected. O S T H P O, O S T L O, to coordinate efforts to expedite compliance with federal laws, policies, and regulations related to archaeological and cultural survey requirements, and recommends the Tribal Council approves this resolution to approve the MOA. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby approve this resolution, approving the MOA between O L H A. Needs to be corrected again. O S T H P O and O S T L O to coordinate efforts to expedite compliance with archaeological and cultural survey requirements. Motion to approve. Okay, motion by Councilwoman Whitehorse, second by Councilman Puyer. Call for the vote. Cora, if you don't mind in the heading, I'll put those, um, I'll put the initials in parentheses. Okay. Wesley Hawkins Sr. Oh. Jim Inks. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle Sr. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Malkin Sr. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Queer. Yes. Don Ray Gosper. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Uh, Jackie Sears. Oh, wow. Garfield Little Dog. Yeah. What are you doing? John Steele Sr. What are you doing? Craig Dillon. Eighteen yes, one not voting. Motion passed. Thank you. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe approving the purchase for marketing services using Rama funding and BIA Highway Safety funding for the purchase agreement of the OST Public Safety and Prima Materia Group PO Box 1665 Rapid City, South Dakota 57709 for $200,000. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Sections 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W of the Tribal Constitution empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe protect and preserve the property of the tribe and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe Law and Order Committee is a standing committee of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe Law and Order Committee did meet on the 22nd of March 20, 2023 with a quorum present and did approve this resolution for, pres for the presentation to the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council for their action. Whereas public safety is a priority for the Oglala Sioux Tribe and recruitment and retention is the focus for the Department of Public Safety. The Department of Public Safety will enter into an agreement with Prima Materia Group to upgrade the website, branding image on social media, modernize the logo, create innovative materials to communicate with the public. And whereas the OST Department of Public Safety will also work with Prima Materia to produce a highway safety commercial to provide public awareness on a specific highway safety message. And whereas the OST Law and Order Committee has reviewed and recommends the Tribal Council approve. 
it authorized the purchase utilizing funds from Rama funding in the amount of $150,000 and $50,000 of the BIA safety, highway safety funding. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby approve the purchase with Rama funding and the BIA Highway Safety Funding OST Department of Public Safety for the purchase agreement with Prima Materia Group, PO Box 1665, Rapid City, South Dakota 57709, in the amount of $200,000. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilwoman Whitehorse, second by Councilwoman Tapio. Prima Materia. Call for the vote. So, Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Minks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Wendell Youngman, Jr. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. George Dreamer, Jr. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Don Roy Gosper. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Uh -huh. Jackie Sears. Uh -huh. Garfield Little Dog. Yes. John Steele Sr. Craig Dillon. Craig Dillon? Yes. Thank you. 19 unanimous motion passed. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry about my yawning too. It's yeah. nap time. <laughs> Ordinance of the Oklahoma Sioux Tribal Council approving and accepting the Federal Transit Administration's FY22, FY2022, Section 531 c to b Public Transportation on Indian Reservations Formula Apportionment to the Oglala Sioux Tribes Oglala Sioux Transit Program in the amount of $852,000 $28 with an approved 10% IDC rate to be administered by the Oglala Sioux Tribes Oglala Sioux Transit Program. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 and under Article 3 of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 2W of the Tribal Constitution empowers the Tribal Council to adopt laws pre protecting, promoting health, I think that's supposed to be Section 1W. To adopt laws protecting health, protecting and promoting the health and welfare of the Oglala Sioux tribe and its membership. And whereas Article 4, Sections 2, I think that's supposed to be 1, is it? Sections 1F and 1M of the Tribal Constitution, the empowerment, no of the tribal constitution empowers the tribal council to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Oglala Sioux tribe and to protect and preserve the property of the tribe. And whereas the economic and business development committee of the Oglala Sioux tribe is st the standing committee for the Oglala Sioux tribes Oglala Sioux transit and recommended on February 11th, 2023, the approval and acceptance of the FTA's FY 2022 Section 5311C2B Public Transportation on Indian Reservations Formula Apportionments to the 
OSTs of Lala Sioux Transit program in the amount of $852,028 with an approved 10% IDC rate to be forwarded on to the Finance Committee for approval and acceptance. Whereas the Finance Committee of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council did recommend on March 2nd, the approval and acceptance of the FY22 section 5311C to be public transportation on Indian reservations formula apportionments to the OSTs Oglala Sioux Transit in the amount of $852,028 with an approved ID with an approved 10% IDC rate to be forwarded on to the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council for approval and acceptance. And whereas according to the super circular two CFR section 200.414 C1 subject is limited to exceptions, the negotiated rates must be accepted by all Federal awarding agencies, the Tribal Transit Formula Program 5311C1 does not fall within the limited exceptions. Therefore, the Oglala Sioux Tribe chooses to use the lower indirect cost rate authorization and must be received from the Tribal Council for the use of a lower indirect cost rate. And whereas the OST Depart DOT Oglala Sioux Tribe transit program is currently funded by the Federal Transit Administration to operate a deviated fixed route rural transit system on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council now seeks to exercise its authority under Article 4, Sections 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W, of the tribal constitution to approve and accept the Federal Transit Administration's FY 2022, FY 2022, that's supposed to be 2022, American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, PL 117-2, March 11, 2021 of section 5311C of the Public Transportation on Indian Reservation Formula Apportionments Award to the OST DOT's Oglala Sioux Transit in the amount of $754,167 with an approved 10% IDC rate. That's wrong. Emma. That, that page two that, is wrong. Yeah, that, that's what goes to this one, to the art one. Okay. And so look on the art, see. This one is the art one. Okay, that one's the art one. So how much is that one? 754. Yeah. So this one should be the 800 and the same as at the beginning. Okay. So this one should say 852? Yeah. Okay. All righty. Formula apportionments award to the OST DOTs of Walla Transit in the amount of $852,028. Mm -hmm. Okay. With an approved 10% IDC rate. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe approves and accepts the, the Federal Transit Administration's FY22, 2022 Section 5311C2B Public Transportation on Indian Reservations Formula Apportionments to the Oglala Sioux Tribe's transit in the amount of 852000 $28 with an approved 10% IDC rate to be administered by the Oglala Sioux Tribes Transit Program. Be it further, further ordained that the president of the Oglala Sioux Tribe is authorized to sign all documents necessary for the execution of this grant award and may also assign or delegate representatives to sign appropriate documents. 
which means the vice president. The president is also empowered to negotiate with the US Department of Transportation's Federal Transit Administration to approve any changes in the original application as necessary. Motion to approve. Second. And all those amendments. Motion by Councilwoman Whitehorse, second by Councilwoman Tapio. Question? So, no questions. So what rate was figured into our indirect cost proposal that we just approved? Um, these these guys are set by a ten percent because of their um, fund from their funding agency. So those that rate of the ten percent is what's set in the indirect cost budget because Dean knows which ones are mandated to have the lower IDC rates. Do you understand? Okay. <laughs> Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yep. Carl Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Don Ray Gosper. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Oh, ha. Huh. Garfield Little Dog. Yes. John Steele Sr. Craig Dillon. Yes. Craig Dillon. Yes. Eighteen yes, one not voting. Motion passed. Okay. Next one is uh, ordinance of the Gulf Sioux Tribal Council approving and accepting the Federal Transit Amer Administration FY 2021 American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. Public Law 117-2, March 11, 2021, of Section 5311C of Public Transportation on Indian Reservation Formula Appointments to the Oglala Sioux Tribes, Oglala Sioux Transit in the amount of $754,167 with an approved 10% IDC rate to be administered by the Oglala Sioux Tribes, Oglala Sioux Transit Program. Whereas Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935 in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934-25 USC, subsection 5123, and under Article 3 of the Oglala Sioux Tribes Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 2W of the Tribal, Tribal Constitution empowers the Tribal Council to adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and welfare of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and its membership. And whereas Article 4, Section 2F and 2M of the Tribal Constitution empower the Tribal Council to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and to protect and preserve the property of the tribe. And whereas the Economic and Business Development Committee of the Oglala Sioux Tribe is the standing committee for the Oglala Sioux Tribe's Oglala Sioux Transit and recommended on February 11, 2023, the approval and acceptance of the FTA's FY 2021 American Rescue Plan Public Transportation or Rescue Plan Act of 2021, Public Law 117-2, March 11, 2021, of Section 5311C of Public Transportation on Indian Reservation Formula Appointments to the OST's Oglala Sioux Transit in the amount of $754,167 with an approved 10% IDC rate to be forwarded onto the Finance Committee 
for approval and acceptance. And whereas the Finance Committee of the Glossu did recommend on March 2nd, 2023, the approval and acceptance of the FY 2021 American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, Public Law 117-2, March 11, 2021, of Section 5311C of Public Transportation on Indian Reservation Formula Apportionments to the OST's Guala Sioux Transit in the amount of $754,167 with an approved 10% IDC rate to be forwarded on to the Guala Sioux Tribal Council for approval and acceptance. And whereas according to the circular 2 CFR subsection 200.414, C1, subject to limited ex exceptions, the negotiated rates must be accepted by all federal awarding agencies. The Tribal Transit Formula Program 5311C1 does not fall within one of the limited ex exceptions. Therefore, if the Gaussu Tribe chooses to use a lower indirect cost rate, authorization must be received from Tribal Council for the use of a lower indirect cost rate. And whereas the OST Department of Transportation Oglalsu Transit Program is currently funded by the Federal Transit Administration to operate a deviated fixed route rural transit system on the Pine Ridge Inner Reservation. And whereas Oglalsu Tribal Council now seeks to exercise its authority under Article 4, Section 2F, 2K, 2M, and 2W of the Tribal Constitution to approve and accept the Federal Trans Transit Administration's FY 2021 American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. Public Law 117-2, March 11, 2021, of Section 5311C of Public Transportation on Indian Reservation Formula Apportionments awarded to the OST DOT's Gulasu Transit in the amount of $754,167 with an approved 10% IDC rate. Now, therefore, be it ordained, <clears throat> the Gulasu Tribal Council of the Gulasu Tribe approves and accepts the Federal Transit Administration's FY 2021 American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 Public Law 117-2, March 11, 2021 of Section 5311C of Public Transportation on Indian Reservation Formula Apportionments to the Ogasu Tribes Transit Program in the amount of $754,167 with an approved 10% IDC rate to be administered by the Oglala Sioux Tribes Transit Program, and be it further ordained that the president of the Oglala Sioux Tribe is authorized to sign all documents necessary for the execution of this grant award, and may also assign or delegate a representative to sign appropriate documents. The president is also empowered to, to negotiate with the U.S. Department of Transportation's Federal Transit Administration to approve any changes in the original application as necessary. Motion to approve. Motion by Councilman Jumpin Eagle, second by Councilwoman Whitehorse. All for the vote. Um, we'll make those corrections like the, that first one, the um, turning section 2F into 1F, 1M, and then on the next page, we'll make those corrections. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Uh, yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. George Dreamer, Jr. Yes. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? Yes. David Puyer? Yes. Don Gosper? Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ha. Uh, Jackie Sears? Oh, uh ha. -huh. Garfield Little Dog? Yes. John Steele Sr.? Craig Dillon? Yes. 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 I got you, Gar. Nineteen unanimous motion passed. Thank you. Um, 
Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council approving and accepting the Federal Transit Administration's FY 2023 Section 5311C to be public transportation on Indian reservation reservations formula apportionments to the Oglala Sioux Tribes Oglala Sioux Transit in the amount of 857,257 with an approved 10% IDC rate to be administered by the Oglala Sioux Tribes Oglala Sioux Transit Program. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935 in accordance with section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 and under article three, of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Constitution. The Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1W of the Tribal Constitution empowers the Tribal Council to adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and, gener health and welfare of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and its membership. And whereas Article 4, Sections 1F and 1M of the Tribal Constitution empower the Tribal Council to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and to protect and preserve the property of the tribe. And whereas the Economic and Business Development Committee of the Oglala Sioux Tribe is the standing committee for the Oglala Sioux Tribe's Oglala Sioux Transit and recommended on February 11th, 2023, the approval an acceptance of the FTA's FY 2023 Section 5311C2B public transportation on Indian reservations formula apportionments to the OST's Oglala Sioux Transit in the amount of $857,257. $857, With an approved 10% IDC rate to be forwarded on to the Finance Committee for approval and acceptance. The Finance, and whereas the Finance Committee of the Oglala Sioux Tribe did recommend on March 2nd, 2023, the approval and acceptance of FY 2023 Section 5311C2B public transportation on Indian reservations formula apportionments to the OST's Oglala Sioux Transit in the amount of $857,257 with an approved 10% IDC rate to be forwarded on to the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council for approval and acceptance. And whereas according to the Super Circular 2 CFR section 200.414 C1, Subject to limited exceptions, the negotiated rates must be accepted by all federal awarding agencies. The Tribal Transit Formula Program 5311C1 does not fall within one of the limited exceptions. Therefore, if the Oglala Sioux Tribe chooses to use a lower indirect cost rate, authorization must be received from the Tribal Council for the use of a lower indirect cost rate. And whereas the OST DOT Oglala Sioux Transit Program is currently funded by the Federal Transit Administration to operate on a deviated fixed route rural transit system on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council now seeks to exercise its authority under Article 4, Section 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W of the Tribal Constitution to approve and accept the Federal Transit Administration's FY 2021 20, American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 TL 117-2 March 11th 2021 of Section 53C of the Public Transportation on the Indian Reservation Formula Apportionments Award to the OST DOT's Oglala Sioux Transit in the amount of $857,257. That art part shouldn't be in there. Yeah. It's just the public law. I mean, the okay, that whereas I just read can be stricken. 
I'll give you my sheet when I'm done, okay? Therefore, be it ordained that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe approves and accepts the Federal Transit Administration's FY 2023 Section 5311C 2B Public Transportation on Indian Reservations Formula Apportionments to the Oglala Sioux Tribe's Transit in the amount of $857,257 with an approved 10% IDC rate to be administered by the Oglala Sioux Tribes Transit Program and be it further ordained that the president of the Oglala Sioux Tribe is authorized to sign all documents necessary for the execution of this grant award and may also sign, assign or delegate a representative to sign appropriate documents. The president is also empowered to negotiate with the U.S. Department of Transportation's Federal Transit Administration to approve any changes in the original application as necessary. Motion to approve with all those amendments, and I'll give you my sheet. Second. Okay. Motion to approve with amendments, second by, oh, by Councilwoman. Whitehorse, second by Councilwoman Tapio. Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Vote. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yeah. Um, yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Austin Watkins, Sr. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross? Yes. Anna Halverson? Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? Yes. David Puyer? Donna Gosper? Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears? Uh -huh. Garfield Little Dog? Yes. John Stale Sr. Craig Dillon? Yes. 18 yes, one not voting, motion passed. Okay, the last one I think for finance, hopefully. Resolution of the Gallows Tribal Council of Gallows Tribe approving the attorney contract between the Gallows Tribe and Dana Hanna for calendar year 2023, January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2023. Whereas the Ogallis Sioux Tribe adopt, adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14th, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 USC 5123. And under Article 3 of the Constitution, the Ogallis Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Ogallis Sioux Tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1B of the Tribal Constitution empowers the Tribal Council to employ legal counsel for the protection and advancement of the rights of the Ogallisu tribe and its membership and its members. And Article 4, Section 1W empowers the Tribal Council to adopt laws, laws promoting the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas the Tribal Council negotiated an attorney contract with Dana Hanna for Indian Child Welfare Act related legal services to be capped at $85,000, inclusive of work and out of pocket expenses as set forth in the attachment hereto. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Tribal Council of the Ogallis Sioux Tribe hereby approves the attorney contract between the Ogallis Sioux Tribe and Dana Hanna, effective from January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023, as attached here to it. And be it further resolved, this attorney contract shall be paid through funds from the OST Legal Department. And be it further resolved, that it is the intent and understanding of the parties that, number one, the overall direction of legal services shall be provided by the Tribal Council acting on behalf of the Gala Sioux Tribe. Number two, day-to-day -day direction on specific cases shall be provided by the Director of OST Child Protection Services and the Director of the OST ICWA Program as delegated by the Tribal Council. Number three, assignments may be given through the OST Legal Department upon committee or Tribal Council action. And number four, monthly written reports shall be provided to the Law and Order Committee. And be it further resolved that the president of the Gallisu tribe or in his absence, the vice president is hereby authorized to execute this contract. Motion to approve. 
Motion by Councilman Jumping Eagle, second by Councilwoman. Who's who? Uh, second that, Cora. Okay, Cora. Whitehorse, um, offer vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Jim Meeks. You. Ryan Jumping Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Cora Whitehorse? Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr.? Yes. James Cross? Yes. Anna Halverson? Yes. George Dreamer, Jr.? No. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Dunderman? Yes. David Puyer? Don Gosper? Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Uh -huh. Jackie Sears? Uh -huh. Garfield Little Dog? Yes. John Steele Sr.? Craig Dillon. Yes. Seventeen yes, one no, one not voting. Seventeen yes, one no, one not voting. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Land. Chairman. No, we have. Go ahead, Council. Resolution of the Ogalaska Tribal Council of the Ogalaska Tribe. Resolution of the Ogalaska Tribal Council of the Ogalaska Tribe to appoint the office of the fifth member of the Executive Committee as the Tribal Historic Preservation Office point of contact. Whereas the Ogalaska tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, USC 123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3 of the Ogalaska tribe of the tribal constitution, the Ogalaska tribal council is governing body of, of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1S, of the Constitution authorizes Tribal Council to adopt laws re regulating the procedures of the Tribal Council, the Executive Committee, chartered organizations, and subcommittees of the Tribal Council, and to adopt laws establishing the order of business dur during regular and special meetings of the Tribal Council. And whereas Article 13, Section 5 establishes the fifth member of the of the executive committee and authorizes the tribal council to assign duties to such fifth member. And whereas the land and natural resources committee has approved adoption of the office of the fifth member of the executive committee as the point of contact for the tribal historic preservation office to assist in the timeliness of co completing assignments and recommends that the Ogalaska tribal council approve and adopt now, therefore, be it resolved, the Ogalaska Tribal Council does hereby approve and adopt the office of the fifth member of the, of the executive committee as the point of contact for the Tribal Historic Preservation Office. With that, I so move. I have a motion by Councilman Puyer. Do we have a second? Second. Motion to table. Okay, Josh, just kidding. I'll, I'll second. <laughs> okay. Second by Councilman Whitehorse. Run a motion. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yep. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumping Eagle, Sr. Wait, Chair, before I vote, I have a question. So in the letter he passed out, it, it, you're designating him as a 
Zippo officer, but in in the in the um, resolution that was read, it are, he's a point of contact. So is he the officer or just the point of contact? As far as I know, because we didn't have one, um, it would be the point of contact. Or uh, from my understanding, the 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 tipple, I'm sorry. You mean the actual officer then? Yes. Okay. My vote, yes. Go ahead. Uh, to clarify, um, as we stated in committee, me and um, chief of staff is working on the new job description. And as soon as we get that, passed and approved it'll be advertised so i am if i if i was just going to be the point of contact if there's any decisions to be made i wouldn't have that authority but the governing bodies government places need that letter from the president and it's so something that's been done in the past so it's acted okay my vote yes howard rooks Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. George Jumer, Jr. Yes. Robin Tapio. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Don Rogosmer. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Uh, Jackie Sears. Oh, uh huh. Garfield Little Dog. Yes. John Stale Sr. Craig Dillon. Yes. Eighteen yes, one not voting. Motion passed. Thank you, Council. Okay, before we start the two thirds, you guys want a quick break? Okay, take a five minute break and we'll continue. Uh -huh. uh, President, yes. I have something to say. I just, uh, during the meeting, I received a text message from a veteran and I just wanted to uh, just announced that, you know, yesterday was uh, the Vietnam Veterans Day. And this veteran said, you know, you should be, uh, do a song for the veterans, the, vet the Vietnam veterans. And I'm really, um, I guess, honored to sit in this circle today with one of those Vietnam veterans. And that's uh, Consumman Steele, John oh. Steele. And earlier he was talking to us about when he was in, in, in the war, vet, uh, Vietnam, he was also an interpreter. And he shared that with us, some stories. So I just wanted to acknowledge that today and just, uh, you know, sh you know uh, honor all our veterans, you know, some sitting in this circle, but just want to recognize, uh, you know, former President uh, John Yellowbird Steele. Now he's our councilman and he's sitting in this circle. And I'm just really honored to, uh, to sit in the circle with him. So I just want to give him a handshake and ask we all of us if we can shake his hand today. Thank you. Oh, yes, I would also like to, I know I post put something on my page this morning to all the Vietnam veterans, you know, because they didn't have a, a welcome home when they came back from war. So, you know, with that, thanks for the reminder. I totally spaced it out today. And uh, we should honor those. Take, take. Actually, let's take a, a moment of silence to honor those um, Vietnam veterans and um, thank them for their service. Because again, they did not have a welcome home, and we appreciate everything they did for this country to this day. Today, today, the we look up to the Vietnam veterans with all the the new. Um, the wars and the veterans that come home, now they're the ones that are sitting in that seat as uh, the, the, the leaders. So let's take a moment of silence to honor them.
Opila. Oh, thank you for uh, that, uh, Council and President. Yes. I also want to just uh, remember uh, George. One of our councilmen, George Dreamer Jr., his grandpa was also in the Vietnam uh, War. So just want to remember him also. He's no longer with us, but, you know, remember all these uh, Vietnam veterans. Like you said, they were forgotten, never given a welcome home. So I just had to share that today on behalf of this veteran that uh, texted me and just reminded me about that, you know. So, you know, thank you to the council and to um, our visiting our audience. Yes. Thank you. Yes, we also, um, uh, Councilman Lunderman would like to sing a song in, in uh, honor of the, today, uh, honoring our Vietnam veterans. <laughs> Hoka. Thank you to Wes, too. He also sits in this circle. And just don't want to re uh, forget about uh, Councilman Wes Hawkins, Sr. Mr. President, you know, sometimes there's other stories connected with that. Yeah. And I was on my 30 day leave. Frank jealous of him was also on his 30 day leave. Same time I was. We went to Vietnam the same time. Frank didn't come back. Well, he came back in a box. Oh. And Frank jealous of him. Father Clayton jealous and his mother Vernice jealous of him adopted me to take Frank's place. And so I just like everybody to know that our traditions as a people are still ongoing today. And so all of the jealous of him family today, all the nieces and nephews and cousins all recognize me as part of their family. I just like to let you know. Oh, Marshall. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, I'd just like to say it's an honor and a privilege to serve the uh, Oglala Sioux Tribe. Wopi Atunka. Oh, thank you for your service and welcome home. Um, Mr. President, since, yeah. since we're on break, just um, are we going to continue this tomorrow in the chambers as well? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, that'll be up to you guys. I'm I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. If you want to take off now? We can adjourn. Okay. Well, either way. Uh, recess. I'm sorry. Uh, if we are meeting in the chambers in the morning, our district has a meeting with our um, construction guy or our owner's rep for our building in the morning at nine. Mm. So um, w Craig and I will both be late. Okay. Go ahead. We had um, some of the guests here that sat all day too. So I don't know. Are they able to come to Pine Ridge? Yeah. That's why I said I'm going to leave it up to the the council here. Think about it when you I can go tell 10 tonight. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Also, but uh, I do want to put one item on. The, it, it needs to be done today. Today is a deadline. And and this one is, uh, it's, uh, we need to see if we want to give permission to present a written testimony for our health care. Uh, and it has to be, um, we need, so we need approval by the council. Mo motion to approve. Second. Okay. To so, get the attorney to uh, draft uh, some comments yes. to that on behalf of the Guala Sioux tribe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Motion to approve. So, okay. Yeah. So uh, we have to come back in there. Yeah. So we'll run that motion when we get back in uh, from break. Could that be uh, Jennifer Hughes would be yes. the one to do that? Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> 